Hello and welcome back to Elden Ring. Last time we finished off the Rea Lucaria uh, Academy, fought Renala, and cleared the rooftops. But we aren't done with Liernia just yet, and actually we're here back at the Table of Lost Grace because we have to speak to a few people. Not over here. First we have to speak to Nefeli. Oh yeah, she is over here, actually. Actually, I think, do we have to speak to Gideon first? Well, wonderful. Make the journey to the capital. The two think you may be out of a way. Yeah, him saying, hey, go to the next location. Okay, so I have to talk to Nefeli first. Because after having her kind of be sickened by what she saw at the village of Albanarix... She has come back and isn't entirely herself at this point. Ah, you. Please, leave me be. It's pathetic, I know, but I... I need to think. Ah, you. Please, it's pathetic, I know, but I... Okay, yeah, now we speak to Gideon, I believe. Journey to the capital. The two think you may be. Ah. You've already heard. Indeed. It seemed the whelp harbored suspicions. So I had no further use for her. Honestly. What a man to do. A determined plebeian is more wicked than an omen horn. Quite frankly. I suspect that's just what the queen wants. A dose of ambition. To incite the tarnished. Yeah. What a great adoptive father. Just abandons his kid once they harbor any, like, question or doubt. Ah, you, please. It's pathetic. Oh. Ah, please. It's pathetic, I know. So you know already, do you? Right. It's true. My father cast me out for indulging my emotions. Forgetting the mission. Punishment for offing his pawns. Father. Mother. Lord Gideon has offered me guidance all my life. I would have done anything for him. To place him on the throne of Elden Lord. And yet I... Though it was not my intent, I betrayed him. And I can no longer trust him, Father. To think he'd order his men to enact such tragedy. Where is the justice he purports in that? He once told me that if he became Elden Lord, he would never allow the downtrodden to be cheated ever again. Was he simply lying to me? Yes, he was. How could I say that? Father has always given me his guidance. And now... I've lost it. No. How could I say that? Alright. Don't think we have to talk to Gideon, but we'll double check just to be sure. Yep, yeah, okay. So now... For the time being, there isn't much we can do about her. I will say for this next part, make sure you've gone to the artist shack. Because that's important. Instead of... Yeah, we'll just teleport to it. I was gonna ride up here to the four belfries, but realistically... There's some trolls with... I think no heads that can cast magic, you gotta look out for them. And remember last episode how I said the imbued sword key was important? This is why. Because now... We have... Teleporter here. A teleporter there. And a teleporter down here. Uh, 
So this will lead to part of Faramazula. That one leads... Can't remember where it leads, actually. I think it's Temple of Anticipation. Yeah. I look away for one second, and I miss where this next one is. And then the last one is... To Nakron, I believe. I am going to double check something quick, just to be sure. Alright, I had to check quick, because I only have two imbued stone sword keys. So we'll actually detour from here quick, because we have to get the third stone sword key. So we're heading all the way to Kaled. And I know this seems intimidating. Oh man, we're going into Kaled? Yeah, it's actually not that bad. Trust me. Easy way to deal with this. Skelly boys. Because they will draw the aggro of every invisible caster in this whole place. And while they run around causing problems, I can keep do what I came here to do. Which is to hopefully not die in the process. Oh. Didn't think I would instantly summon my horse right there. So we have to scale all of these locations. There's three towers. We have to light them, which isn't going to be that difficult. The boss room is there. We'll deal with the boss later. I mean, I could even do the boss now. This, The boss here is laughable. It is barely a boss, if you would want to call it that. Hey, double slash. Yeah, even these guys. Not even a concern. I'm just hopping from rooftop to rooftop. Nary a care in the world. Oh, Cerulean Tear Scarab. That one will boost the effect of your cerulean flasks. So if for some reason you're not getting enough FP out of them, you can slap that on. Is it worth it? Eh. I think you're better off using one that reduces cost if you're going to use a helmet. Or at least one of those scarabs. Simply because the danger of taking more damage in my eyes, is an offset by getting more flask or more FP out of them. Unless you're getting just, like, immense amounts, but I don't think it pays out that well. Ah, clipped your foot, loser. Okay. Now all of the seals have been broken. Whoop. Didn't mean to fall. Didn't mean to also get point blanked by that. That spell hurts. Yeah, skelly boys.
Skelly's always putting in work. Get the red main painting, that'll be useful. It comes, I believe that one comes in handy later. There's a number of paintings that you can get away with not picking up. The one for the incantation scarab, if you're really into it, is worth picking up. There's, I think the red main one is another one that's useful to grab. There's a couple of these alcoves throughout the city. Spelldrake Talisman plus one, that's good. That's increased resistance to magic damage. Didn't mean to hop off. Okay, so we gotta go up and around here. We're just going to do this this way. I, for some reason, I'm just not getting this right. Grab that. I actually should have enough for another flask. Staff of Loss. That's good if you're using, like, invisibility spells. So, I think it's night spells is what they're labeled as. Do I use it? Nah, I use the Staff of, like, the Prince of Death. Night Comet, so that's one of the spells that goes with it. We're gonna rest to reset the area. Mostly because I want my skeletons back. Not taking away my free meat shields. I remember going through here the first time and I thought this place was a nightmare. There we go. That's what I wanted to see was that sword key. And then we'll just fast travel back. Get the cheeky reset, and then we can just ride through everything. Oh, this is the wrong door. Oh well, this is actually good too, because we need this. I forgot which doors lead where. Yeah, it's the one... literally just... down here. It's so out of the way, it doesn't even feel like it's the boss room.
Yeah. Already one down. Kaled feels like an area with an identity crisis. Half the area is really tough, and then half the area is just a pushover. Now you get Lusat's Glintstone Staff. So if you weren't sure about using Azur's gl Staff, you now have the other one, which I think they're just increased damage of sorceries at the cost of increased FP and increased efficiency. Or duration, something like that. But now we can head back to the two uh, four belfries. My brain was like, ah, yes, the two belfries. <laughs> and then looking at them, like, wait, there's four. So we'll just start off with this one. Don't remember which one it is. I think it's. Nakron? We'll see. Oh, the Chapel of Anticipation. Perfect. I actually wanted to see this one. Oh, also, note, don't go over there. Everybody's seen the video, this whole cliff edge just breaks off. Oh, I can't bait it. But don't, don't do it. You, you fall to, you, to your death and that's it. There's no big thing here. Nascent butterflies. It's our old buddy, the starting boss. Just as annoying as ever. <laughs> yep, and you get the Ornmel Straight Sword and Gold Beast Crest Shield, which I believe are what you get if you beat him the first attempt. Which, they're decent gear. We can get a quick look at them. It's actually a pair of swords you use. Grant holy damage, but... You can't change the Ash of War and doesn't get any faith scaling. The shield is just a shield with lower strength requirements. Lower than most, but it does have 100% physical resist, so it is nice when you get hit, no physical damage will bleed through. But we're here for another reason. We had picked up the painting at the Artist Shack, which actually depicted this location. And if we go in... I believe we can go... I think this might be it? Yeah. The Stormhawk King. So those annoying birds you can summon, you can now summon them yourself to help. And it'll shoot fire, and it's it's a whole fun summon. Or no, the Stormhawk King I think we have to get for Nefeli, and then Stormhawk Dene or Dena is the one we get. Either way, we still get a cool thing. We can, at some point, head back, give the item to Nefeli, and that'll improve her mood. We still got two more belfries to clear. Yeah, I have to check and see if I have everything, because the next two fights are not necessarily easy. Yeah, because this one is, I think, Nakron. 
The fight's doable, it's just annoying. Yep, Nakron, the Eternal City. So we just drop on down. Make sure, I mean, Rotten Breath will probably work as an opener. But we'll grab everything here first. Which we haven't actually been to this area yet. So this is kind of your first view. We got a Crucible Knight over there. Yeah, figured I was going to eat that one on the chin. I really hate these guys. They're stupidly persistent. Okay, good. We did get him with... Uh... What you call it? It's with Scarlet Rot. That was the whole goal here. Ah, crap. I hate that move. Ah, oh, those guys are just not fun. Every time I fight them, I just loathe it. But that's all there is here, was... The charm was kind of the big thing in that fight. So now we go back to the Belfries! And then this is Crumbling Farah Missoula, which is endgame. If that isn't a wild look, I don't know what is. Now we have to find the way down. Yeah, here we go. Oh, crap. I did not want to do that. Yeah, so Fair Missoula is not a very friendly place. <laughs> we'll try that again, and maybe this time I don't fall to my death like an idiot. And I'd really like to get those souls back. And burn another rune arc. It's always worth using them. It's like 40 levels for free.
Okay, let's try this again. Jump to there. Jump to there. Now we have these two guys, who are the Beastmen of Faramazula, which you will remember from early on, the first dungeon. Which is something I always find pretty neat, was the fact that like the first dungeon we did turned out to be one of these guys. These guys are a lot easier than I remember. I mean, they do have the attack pattern of Crackhead, but... I remember them being a lot tougher when I fought them. And Lightning Bolt. Granted, these guys are probably... I mean, they are scaled-back versions of what you'll fight later on in this area. Did I miss an item? Huh. I'll double back and check. Okay, so after consulting the archives and looking around... I did not miss anything. This area just had the Fair Missoula Beastmen. And with that, I will call it here. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button. It helps out the channel a lot. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.